It's 10 o'clock in Mountain Time. It is Thursday, January 14th, and uh, we are on uh, today. <clears throat> Tom and Shane, no business in politics. Hey, if uh, you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, hit the little uh, like a button and uh, like us on YouTube. We'll be happy to. Uh, uh, we need subscribers. We're trying to get to 500 subscribers, so please help us out with that. If you wouldn't, uh, if you wouldn't mind, we would appreciate that very much. And uh, Shema Tobin is with me, Tom Eaglehoff, and uh, we are uh, we are about ready to get going here. But a couple things you need to know. First of all, we're here every Tuesday and Thursday. We'll take on business topic uh, to help your small, your home-based, or your startup business succeed. And, of course, uh, our political shows are on uh, radio on Saturday, 8 to 11, Mountain Time. Click listen now. You don't have to sign up. You don't have to leave any personal information, no email, no credit cards, no nothing. All you got to do is click listen now, and you can call us. You can text us. You can do all of those great things. And also, if you missed any of our past shows, you can listen or watch uh, our past shows. Our Saturday shows are recorded, not live, not video. So uh, you can go to KMMSAM, uh, KMMSAM.com, click on Tom and Jane's podcast, and please share that with your friends. And uh, Shane, how are you doing this morning? Cold. Boy, is it cold. It's definitely winter. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Sandy's on with us. Sandy says, hi. Thanks, Sandy, for being here. We appreciate that very much. And well, today, Shane, uh, we've got a we got a big topic to talk about. We're going to talk about how to protect your small business uh, from uh, all sorts of uh, outside <laughs> interference, uh, patents, copyrights, trademarks, service marks, uh, trade secrets, confidential confidentiality agreements, all sorts of things that protect your uh, privates, uh, your privacy uh, in your business. It's all See, right. I, very yeah. important, especially if you've already started off and have developed what you what is called a logo or a mm -hmm. service mark. And mm -hmm. in, in the reference of the world of legality, that can become a trademark. And uh, you have a lot more protection with uh, uh, with trademarking your intellectual property, your good, which is a product mm -hmm. you provide, or your service that you provide. Uh, it's a lot mm -hmm. less expensive to protect in the in the law because uh, the, the, the law is recent uh, as uh, 1979 and then federal law in 94 and 96. So the precedent of, of trademarks is young. It's mm -hmm. developed and, um, and it's, uh, it's more powerful than having a patent actually. And uh, there's no exposure because the trademark is just, as I said, your service mark or logo that you've started with. Yeah. Well, patents and trademarks do two different things. So let's start with patents, first of all. First of all, you can't, some things you can't patent, you can't patent an idea. Uh, you can't patent an idea. Uh, I can't patent a brown or clear, sugary, fizzy drink. Can't do it. <laughs> so I can, I can patent Coke, the formula for Coke, formula for 7-Up. But I can't patent the idea of uh, of something. So, and uh, normally patents are things you can hold in your hands. They're vacuum cleaners, they're toasters, they're medical equipment, they're um, you know any number of uh, things like that. And uh, they can be pricey. Patents can be pricey to uh, uh, to to attain. Um, and I'll go through the pricing of some in just a minute. But the um, the important thing you have to realize is that the patent law changed a few years ago. It used to be the first person to make the, the machine or the device was protected. Now it's the first person who files. So this becomes even more important because you've got to, you've got to protect um, your patent and file as soon as possible because if you're talking to other people about their about your idea and they have the resources to make that a product or sir or a, that product and if they patented first even though you had the prototype before even though you had the idea before even though you have everything in place to uh, make this thing happen uh, whoever files first gets the patent 
That's right. And it was Patton and Hamilton, uh, founding fathers in the 18th century, 1886, I believe, that when you set up the U.S. Patent Office. But the, the great, great deception about a patent is twofold. Number one, you have to disclose everything about the patent to get one, mm-hmm. which is dangerous right. because without any protection globally, you're, you're giving up to the world what you've created and they have no restrictions at all. Secondly, they, you know, once you've registered, they let, they, they give you false, uh, false narrative or false protection and thinking that you can defend it by saying, you know, you have a patent pending. Well, the third problem with that is because of the nature of the, of the patent office and the bureaucracy, um, you know, it can take anywhere from two to four years for them to do a job that, you know, you can do now on the internet in a couple hours, literally, you really can with, with the different uh, applications that are out there for engineering, um, historical reference with uh, Wikipedia and, and so forth. You, you can find out if there's anything similar or what you're trying to patent. The, the other side of the this issue too becomes what's called, you know, um, intellectual property because it, that, that's a different type of a burden, but we'll get into that as we continue the conversation. Yeah, that's the other thing. Well, well, the cost of patents, um, there's um, there's a big cost involved. Uh, I know you can go on the internet and they'll say, get a patent for $49. You're not getting a patent for $49. I'm sorry. It just ain't going to happen. Uh, so uh, let's go over some of the costs of uh, obtaining a patent. Uh, first of all, uh, you'll, you'll have to have an attorney uh, to file the patent for you. You don't have to, but if you want it protected properly, uh, you are going to have to. So there's several types of patents. One is an extremely simple patent. So, for example, if you had an electric switch, a coat hanger, paper clip, diaper, earmuffs, ice cube tray, uh, the filing fees are going to cost you about five to 7000 and then a patent search is another uh, 1000 to 1250 and if you have a relatively simple patent, like a board game, an umbrella, retract- retractable dog leash, a uh, belt clip for a cell phone, a toothbrush, a flashlight, something like that, you're looking at 7000 to $8,500 for the filing fees for that. And again, 1000 to 1250 for the uh, patent search. If you've got something like a power tool, a lawnmower, a camera, you're looking at eighty five hundred to ten grand, and another twelve fifty for the filing fee or for the uh, patent search, rather. And if you got something like a riding lawnmower or a uh, solar concentrator or a cell phone, you're looking at ten grand to twelve thousand, and again fifteen hundred to seventeen fifty for a uh, search. And if you got something like a shock absorbing prosthetic device, uh, that's twelve to fourteen thousand uh, filing fees, and another seventeen hundred to two thousand for a, for a search. And if you got something highly complex like an MRI scanner, uh, a, a satellite technology, uh, something like that, you're looking at fourteen to sixteen thousand plus uh, two to five thousand for uh, a search. And if you've got something software or uh, automated systems, uh, uh, business methods, much like Parler, for example, 16 grand or more, and 2,500 to 3,000 bucks uh, for, the, uh, for the search. So uh, a patent is not cheap. Um, and uh, the other costs that are involved, you've got to have specific drawings of your product. Um, these, these have to be engineered drawings. They've got to be very specific. They can take, um, they can take, uh, months to, uh, draw. And, uh, also a person drawing those plans for you is going to cost you some money. So patents, um, you know, if you've got a really good idea, Hey, go for it. But, uh, keep in mind that you're going to, you're going to have some upfront costs that are pretty heavy. Uh, for uh, patenting a product, so. And this is one of the major concerns that all people in small business that are, have with new ideas. And th- the bottom line is, is that you're going to have to retain, I'm going to use that word again, retain a lawyer, an accountant, and very much an engineering in engineering firm. Mm-hmm. And when I say retain, they're going to ask for a minimum amount of money be deposited with them in their uh, uh with their firm and that that amount be maintained 
<clears throat> so as Tom's pointed out, these costs, they then one will take it upon themselves to pay them. <laughs> They, they will pay them for you and uh, that will go against the retainer so as an yep. example if you have to pay some fee for a patent of fifteen thousand they'll pay it now you're down to 10 in your in your in, in the retainer that you have and they expect you to write a check that day for fifteen thousand so it maintains its its position of 25. <clears throat> they're not doing this work for free and they're not doing it up front and they don't expect you to pay them afterwards so they want you to pay them as it moves and they want to know you have the money to be able to afford it the ongoing costs they know are going to happen so they want to know you're going to be able to afford that as well so these are things again in your business plan that we've talked about and your financial plan and your income statement that you have to plan for in accordance of what's going to be required that's why it's important to be quite certain of of the different in, um, aspects of this that know that you're, you're going to have and now that's just talking about the patent we haven't even gotten to the trademark and uh and that's why it's so important because there are a lot of reasons why trademarks and or whoa whoa, whoa whoa slow down slow down uh you've got the list of things we're going to talk about so don't don't start off on trademarks because we haven't got the copyright yet i didn't uh, no i was just saying trademarks have cost too yeah but yeah. not nearly as much but but they're added costs so there you, you yeah, will yeah. have other costs besides patents at the very beginning yes oh yeah you will no question yeah uh copyright uh let's talk a little bit about copyright because um uh, we have uh i'm an author so i have intellectual property um a copyright uh is normally uh anything that you put down on paper uh, to make it easy there could be other things but uh, certainly, if you uh, if you write a book, you write a play, uh, you uh, uh, create a, a, a TV program idea, <clears throat> something like that. Um, normally, uh, it is automatically copyrighted the moment you do it. However, uh, you do need to register it in order for it to be legally protected. Now. Again, what uh, used to happen would be that if you created a book or a manuscript, you would put that in an envelope, you would send it to yourself registered mail, and uh, you would not open it. And if you were ever, uh, you know, sued or, or had a court action against you, you could prove by opening that envelope with the postal date on it when it was done. So that would be one way to... Uh, uh, to protect something of uh, of copyright. Now, copyright is uh, uh, ninety uh, the life of the uh, person plus ninety years. So, uh, copyright's pretty pretty in there. Um, yeah, and, and when yeah. that that definition means that uh, it's the date of the copyright, and of course the uh, death of the person. And then it becomes uh, public domain. Music is 75 years. But, mm -hmm. uh, the writings or poetry, of, of books, anything that you, you know, yeah. can create is 90. Yeah. And you can renew them. Uh, so the family estate or whatever could renew the copyright. Uh, if they, you know, there's certain things you go through to, uh, to do that. Um, Patents also, we forgot to mention, those need to be renewed on a regular basis. Uh, usually it's every 10 or 15 years, something like that. I forget the exact date, but be keep in mind, you're uh, obviously you got everything done. You're just doing a renewal, so that's not going to be as expensive as the original, as the original outlay. So, and with intellectual property and or uh, a prop uh, a product itself that you've patented um, as the success of it evolves and you make changes or you adapt it, that extends the patent as well. Mm -hmm. So th th those are one of the reasons that uh, pharmaceutical right. companies are really big on their mm -hmm. trademarks and patents because, you know, if they can change uh, even the smallest uh, chemical aspect of, of a medication, you know, they can extend the patent on it. And they do, you know, they go to great lengths to do that, to protect that long-term you know, value of, of their product. Mm -hmm. Absolutely right. All right. Yeah, copyrights, uh, uh, again, uh, they're for almost anything that you write down, anything you create uh, verbally or uh, uh, for, um, you know, reading. Um, 
that uh, the, that's why a copyright uh, is important to protect that in intellectual property. Copyright, I don't believe, is uh, is protected worldwide. Um, I think uh, anybody can cut, rip you off overseas on a copyright. So, don't know. Well, no, that's, sure true. That, that's true. That's true. But there are um, you can copyright pro uh, products and music globally, mm -hmm. in, in in specific. Uh, it, countries individually yeah um, or or you know in in uh, government agencies like uh, the un will accept copyrights and trademarks and so you, there are ways to protect you but it's very once again it's very expensive yeah, you, price, to, yeah. you, you gotta go through the same process that you did before and of course uh, the, your lawyer here doesn't represent you there you'd have to have a lawyer in, in whatever country yeah. or wherever at <laughs> So, 150 yeah, countries, boy, yeah, a lot of go for it. <laughs> or somebody who does intellectual law or intellectual mm -hmm. property law, I guess, would have the uh, contacts to take care of that for you. Well, along with uh, trademarks, we've also got service marks. And uh, uh, if you're not sure what a service mark is, um, uh, if you care enough to send the very best, um, would be one for Hallmark. Um, uh, fly the friendly skies would be a service mark for uh, United Airlines and oh what a feeling for Toyota and uh, this Bud's for you for Budweiser so uh, all of those little sayings if there's a saying out there that people be uh, become synonymous with your business then you can also register a, a, a service mark and uh, so uh, you know if you got some kind of a catchy phrase uh, you know, uh, whatever, uh, then you can also uh, protect that from other people, other people using it. That's right. And, you know, there are um, a lot of ways, as we said, uh, the Internet is very specific about this, but there's also government agencies. Uh, one is called TEAS, and it's uh, for uh, new uh uh, examples mm -hmm. uh, and applications uh, for for uh, trademarks or PDFs as they call them, and uh, these things are all help you protect your interests and protect uh, what you've created. So it's just a matter of follow up and uh, going to the different uh, websites that are recommended when you search something, and again just uh, following the uh, instructions that you've been given by your lawyers and in. in in dealing with it. So Tease is a trademark electronic application system that is online. It's tr tremendous because it gives you instant access globally mm -hmm. to uh, the potential of uh, your trademark conflict uh, if you have one that someone else already has. So that's a great site to go to. Goods and Services Manual is provided by USPTO, uh, which is a, a government agency, uh, interestingly enough, uh, that you use for tra trademarks, United States um, for, um, for postal trademarks, as Tom talked about, is the best way to utilize it is uh, to send yourself something. But that's the U.S. Patent and, and Trademark Office. So uh, it, 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 it's an expanding thing because technology moves quicker than government. We know that, but you still have to keep up with the law and you have to protect yourself both ways, going and creating and someone coming at you. There you go. Uh, from Dan, uh, in 1989, I created a cartoon character named Nick the Newspaper, and uh, copyright was sent to the Library of Congress, and it cost me $10. So let's talk a little bit about uh, what uh, the cost of uh, uh, copyrights and service marks are. Uh, for a copyright normally uh, will run you anywhere from uh, uh, probably 50 to 65 bucks, depending on the type of form. Uh, unless you file it online, that'll only cost you 35 bucks. So prices have come up since Dan did his at 89. Uh, expedited service for uh, processing uh, an application can set you back 760 bucks. Um, and expedited certification will cost 265. And renewal of a copyright can cost between 115 and 220, uh, depending on what it is and. Um, you know what's what's going on with it so so well, yeah there's always there's always going to be costs involved in there yeah copyright particularly for music and or books 
Um, <laughs> oddly enough, in both cases, you can have a publisher who will protect you or should, mm -hmm. yeah. depending on the contract you sign with them and you know how, how you set that protection up. Um, <clears throat> they're basically there not, not only to provide the service to get your product out, be it music or a book or uh, something that you've written rather, and so, you know, you do have people that will come along with you that want to participate in your success um, because, of course, uh, music and writing has got a much bigger opportunity for uh, quicker success than, you know, creating a product and distribution and so forth that we, we, will, we will and have talked about already. So it's always important to, to manage the, the timelines that you're dealing with again in your business plan your financial statement because they change directly in response to the type of product that you're going to utilize and create a career around yeah absolutely let's move on to uh, trade secrets because uh, sometimes you'll have a formula or something like that uh, keep in mind that coke has never patented the uh, their formula uh, they keep it. They keep it in two different places. They keep half of it in one place, half of it in another place. Nobody knows the full formula, <laughs> so uh, they have never patented that or uh, trademarked it. Uh, Yellow pages are not trademarked, uh, so um, for whatever reason, I don't know. But anyway, uh, the trade secrets like the Coke formula and some of the other things have to be protected, um, so that uh, employees who are in the process of creating your material or your product, uh, they can't uh, go out in the world after they stop working for you and say, well, here's how Coke does it, or here's how, uh, here's how uh, McDonald's, here's their secret sauce recipe or whatever. So trade secrets are pretty important and uh, you need to uh, uh, make sure that those are protected through your uh, again, through your attorney and also through your employee manual. Uh, employee manuals, uh, you can get them at the uh, your local job service. They'll help you set one up for free. Uh, you can add in anything you want. Um, but again, uh, down the road, we're going to talk about employees. And uh, unless it's spelled out in the uh, employee manual, how a person is discharged uh, you may be uh, you may be in trouble if you fire someone uh, under the wrong uh, uh, un without adhering to the employment uh, contract agreement so all of these uh, trade secrets and things like that very important to uh, secure uh, your uh, things that happen within your four walls yes it's it's always relevant and and uh, as Thomas pointed out the bottom line is making the deal clear particularly with co-founders uh, if it's something you've developed yourself, it's somewhat easier because it's your own personal intellectual uh, property we've talked about. You can initiate and protect before you bring in investors. But if it's a group of people that have worked together to, you know, create something like in the Facebook case or in Microsoft's case or Apple, um, you know, there were uh, different people involved. And uh, it, it's always important that you have not only a non-disclosure, which is what it says it is, nobody can disclose anything, um, you know, but a non-competitive agreement. Because uh, one of the biggest problems, of course, you may have is you have a founder that works with you and then decides, nah, I don't want to work with you anymore, and goes off and starts their own company and starts producing the same product. And because you didn't clarify who, who owns the intellectual property, meaning i.e. the business you've already set up or you yourself, they, they by rights can then start up a company on their own. So non-disclosure, non-circumvention agreements are very clear and very important. Um, they're also very expensive. But the great thing is, is you can literally, again, go on the internet, go to other public companies. They have non-disclosure, non-circumvention agreements that they have filed because they're required to by law with the SEC. And so you can go and look. I mean, they're massive documents. And uh, you, if you, this is not just a, you know, a binge reading. It's like a weekend binge reading. But yeah. <laughs> the important thing is they're there, and you save yourself a lot of money having a, you know, a, a basic non-disclosure, non-circumvention agreement that you can actually draft yourself from what people have paid tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars to be done. 
<clears throat> and depending on uh, what the process is, um, the uh, confidential uh, confidentiality agreement has to be spelled out in great detail uh, as well. So, you know, make sure, you know, it's not just I'm not going to tell somebody about your product. It means I'm going to not tell you that we mix it here. We uh, put this additive in. We do this. We do that. Whatever. So check with your again with your attorney uh, who will uh, guide you through uh, how detailed uh, it has to be to protect the secrets of uh, whatever uh, whatever trade secrets you have. And and now you're beginning to see the importance of where we started with. And we want to always remind you go back to where we we started and and move through the process because it is a process of establishing a corporation or an LLC or even doing business as. So you have that understanding already from previous discussions, and now you know what we're now we're adding to it. It's like building a building. Yeah. <laughs> so each plan. To move forward before you even decide to sell something or generate revenue is is another floor on the building called your com your company uh, so you're be more successful uh, the the more things you do at the beginning the fewer mistakes uh, you have at the min the be beginning middle or end so that's mm -hmm. the whole reason we want to go through all these with you share the information add and add the advice as well yeah um, the uh, the two well, there's probably three types of co uh, confidential agreements uh, you'll sign. Uh, one, of course, is to protect any trade secrets. Uh, the other one uh, is uh, is a uh, non compete um, that you won't uh, work for another competitor. Uh, this is kind of iffy as to whether or not you can enforce this uh, because I did this. Uh, in my personal life, and uh, where I went from, uh, um, I went from one company and went to work for a, a competing company, which is was almost exactly the same, same services, same, um, same everything. And um, my attorney told me that they can't keep you from earning a living in a field you know. So that's. That's where it may run into a, uh, a problem. So your confidential agreement, your non-compete uh, needs to be uh, spelled out pretty well uh, in order to protect uh, an employee from uh, taking everything about you and your clients and everybody else, which I did, uh, took to a um, competitor. So make sure you have that all spelled out clearly. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. And and the things that the company you're leaving has responsibility to is uh, itself and uh, if it has shareholders. So clearly, uh, as we have said, uh, your best choices is with uh, uh, trademarks um, uh, um, being a great way to provide cover for you in that situation. And so, you know, if you stipulate in your non-disclosure, non-circumvention agreements, clearly the, tr the trademark that has been established for the product that you have and that uh, there, you know, the uh, ne necessity the company w would have to, to do to protect it or the action they would have to take, it, it pretty well establishes for the, the employee leaving um, the, the, you know, the danger, because one, one of the things in a non-disclosure circumvention agreement you'll find it very often is the right of the company to go after you as an individual. Um, a, a lot of times someone will go and work for another company and the company will promise that they'll protect them and they'll provide them cover. But if your non-disclosure circumvention agreement is done properly, that won't happen. And so an individual having to defend themselves, you know, which we're talking about retainer fees, and they, they can get very expensive when you start talking about lawsuits, uh, you know, or uh, actions against you from a corporation. You know, you're, you may be looking at a fifty to two hundred thousand dollar retainer for a lawyer because, you know, it's, it's, those are long and expensive processes like a patent that we've disclosed. Yeah. Yeah, it depends on how much protection you need uh, for right. for your uh, product or service. Uh, also, I forgot to mention uh, earlier we were talking about trademarks. Uh, when you submit your logo to um, uh, for a trademark on your logo, uh, you're you're going to have to spell out 
all the colors used and colors have numbers uh, universally for printers so you're going to have to uh, disclose all of the printer numbers of the color numbers you use as well as any typefaces uh, that you're using any fonts uh, as well so um, make sure that you uh, include that in your and when uh, on the trade market pr uh, pretty well uh, lays that out and um, so uh, make sure that uh, you do that. I just wanted to throw that in. Next, we want to talk about something really important, and this is confidentially and invention assignment agreements for employees. This is where an employee comes up with an idea. He's working for you. He's using your equipment, uh, your uh, facilities, and he comes up with an invention and decides, hey, this is my invention. I'm going to take it and run with it and make tons and millions of money. And uh, so if you don't want that to happen, then we've got to spell out that if an employee creates, creates something on your property using your facilities, your equipment and whatever, that uh, product belongs to you, the owner of the business, not the employee who created it. Yeah, and the CIA agreement, a confidential information and invitation, inventions assignment agreements, one, one of the principal causes for those are uh, your existing employer uh, basically wants to establish pre-invention, you know, what some type, what type of an entitlement they, they have. So that they may want to uh, suggest, and you, you know, of course, you have to read any agreement that you sign, and you need to take it to a lawyer and get legal advice on any agreement that you sign, or it's not it's not enforceable. So part of the agreements that you will get is that uh, a um, I've read this, b I've I've sought legal advice uh, about it, and c uh, I agree that you know if I do determine. Uh, success at something while working for you, uh, I may give you, a, you know, a, for the sake of argument, a negotiated 10% royalty on it. Um, you might also have to consider that the company may ask for first right of refusal, meaning they want to have the first right of refusal. Uh, they want to have the first right to fund you. So if you've thought of something and and you think that and someone comes to you outside, a friend, a family member, and says, "Oh, gee, I'll give you the fifty thousand dollars for you to develop that." You, you may, under this agreement, have to go back to your present employer and say, well, I've been offered $50,000 to develop this. Um, are you prepared to, to meet that? And if so, fine. If not, then I'm, I'm going to move towards uh, funding elsewhere. And that forces you then, as, as we pointed out, to set up what's called an S corporation, where you can have le fewer than 100 shareholders, but start funding your company, even though you're still in employed with this company. Mm -hmm. So you can work with your company. You don't necessarily just have to leave, but you have to be yeah. very, very aware of the agreement and make sure you get good advice, hopefully, from uh, a, a lawyer. Now, another point, all kinds of confidential information agreements out there on the internet in public companies, whether in different areas, different industries for you to read. Uh, they're all registered because of, of being public. They have to register these documents. So again, go do the research, make the comparisons, go read the different types of confidentiality agreements that uh, uh, people have signed or you know how they've signed them to their benefit because you can find it if you're willing to take the time to do it. Amen. Yep. Um, one of the sources you can go to, we'll publish, uh, we'll publish the, um, we'll publish the resources uh, down below. If you're on, uh, if you're on YouTube, uh, once uh, we get this broadcast up on YouTube, we'll have the uh, resources and everything at the bottom. And we'll also have them on our uh, KMMSAM.com uh, for our, the audio portion of uh, this show. So we'll have the resources uh for those in uh, both places. Uh, Nolo.com is one uh, that uh, you can get some uh, legal information about that. Uh, you can contact uh, attorneys, whatever. Uh, many times the library, uh, your local library, believe it or not, there's still some around. Uh, they uh, often have uh, this uh, type of thing uh, as well. They'll have uh, the, a book of these. So uh, you can uh, uh, look one up. Uh, copy it, take it home, and add whatever you want to do. Uh, run it by an attorney um, just for the purposes of making sure you got everything you need, and then uh, and then go from there. So, 
All right, uh, that's going to wrap it up for us. Uh, Shane, you want to do a uh, market wrap up for us? Um, if you like, uh, you know, it's always important to be cognizant of the market. Today, the Dow Jones is showing some weakness in strength. It's only up 86 to 31,142. But, you know, it's holding over 30,000. Uh, we have always said that if it could hold between 31 and 32,000, that uh, it's it's a strong indication the market may move higher. Standard Poor's 500 is up seven points at 3,817. NASDAQ is up uh, 20 points. Uh, the European markets are looking great when, as they should be. And of course, the commodity markets are rule the world at this point because uh, um, currencies are fluctuating so significantly. Crude oil is 55.90 in Europe, 52.99 in West Texas. Natural gas, 268, has to be over $2. We want that cost to be covered so it's profitable to produce in the United States. Gold is at 18.46, up $3. Silver is at 25, and uh, the most important thing that, of course, everybody now is talking about aren't currencies, but it's Bitcoin. 39,717 folks, up 2,324, so um, it's up 5.2%. Uh, uh, Lots of things happening in the market right now because of the variations in volumes that are trading, which means people are literally shorting stocks in a day trade. That's called a naked short. Hoping in the, in the fl in the flight of a day, a stock might drop one two percent, and they can buy it back in one day and make a trade. So lots of indications out there that this well, it looks like a bull market. It's 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 you know it's tedious. It may, it may be on the edge. So have a great day. Be happy. Be safe. All right, uh, Linda says uh, thank you. Uh, I have started a book. Thank you for all the information. Well, we wish you well with that uh, with that uh, going on. Uh, uh, hopefully. And uh, hey, don't forget, if you're watching us on YouTube, by all means, subscribe. Hit the subscribe button down there to the lower right-hand side. That'll pop up the little notification bell. Click on that and uh, click all, and you'll be notified whenever we have another podcast. And like us and please comment. We'd be interested very much in uh, what you uh, what you have to say. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we've given you some good information. Uh, Shane mentioned Bitcoin. We're going to talk about Bitcoin uh, a week from today with uh, Mike McCormick, uh, financial advisor. So Shane and I will chat with uh, Mike. And uh, also, of course, uh, as uh, you well know, uh, that um, our political show is on uh, every Saturday, 8 to 11 Mountain Time. Click, click listen now at KMMSAM.com. So make sure you get over there to uh, hear that. We'll talk about business and politics over there for three hours. And uh, by all means, uh, you can uh, tune in, you can call us, you can ask questions, you can text us, you can do all sorts of things. And of course, if you missed any of our past shows, including this one, if you need the more information, uh, watch or listen to our past shows at KMMSAM.com. Just go over there and click on Tom and Shane's podcast and that'll get you there. And we want to thank everybody for uh, listening and watching. And uh, we really appreciate you guys supporting our channel. We're trying to get to 500 subscribers. So, hey, make sure you hit that subscribe button and uh, the notification bell. And uh, let us know uh, you're out there because uh, we uh, we need all the people we can get. So spread the word and uh, let everybody know uh, what's going on. So say goodbye, Shane. I will in day, indeed. Now, so be happy, be safe, live in the moment because this is your moment. If you want to become an independent person and build a company of your own, it's important that you work to live. And that's the whole story. Don't just live to work because that's important for you as your own person. Live to work. Yep. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you for joining us. All right. Thank you, Shane. And uh, we'll see everybody Friday, 8 to 11 on the radio. We'll be back next Tuesday with another podcast. So uh, by all means, keep that in mind. Uh, let's see. One uh, parting comment here, if I can uh, get that up here. Uh, yeah, Dan says, have a great week. We will, uh, Dan. And uh, Dan does the uh, voiceover for our Saturday show. Uh, he introduces us. So thanks, Dan, for uh, doing that for us. We really appreciate it. And um, so that'll do it for us. Uh, we are out of here. And uh, hey, um, all views are welcome here. And if you think it there, there's a pretty good chance that we will say it here. So keep that, <laughs> keep that in mind. All right. And uh, thanks, everybody. And uh, everybody have a great week. We are done. Thank you.